Hello, people. I'm Ginny Metherill. I'm a fourth generation witch. So we're back with my ever popular almanac series looking at all the witchcraft you can do on which days and why during the month of September. As always with these videos, what I like to do is to give you a general overview of the witchcraft trends that are happening throughout the month of September. And then we'll look at the nitty gritty day to day detail of what witchcraft you can do when and why. So, with that said, let's get straight in to our overview of trends. September is a reaping month. It's a harvest month. It's a month of plenty. This is when we are gathered pretty much all the wheat harvest in, starting on the late summer fruits harvest and the beginning of the apples, which is an incredibly important part of the life cycle of a pagan witch. In ancient Welsh, they had it as the month of reaping. The Anglo-Saxons called it the Holy Monath, meaning the Holy Month, because there were so many sacred festivals happening at this time of dedications to the gods, of the cutting of the corn, of the bringing in of the harvest home. It is a lot of soft, warm days intermingled with some slightly blowy weather. September is known as a month of winds, and this was attributed in the olden days to witches frolicking. So if you're a witch, go out and frolic in the month of September because you're supposed to. I think that sounds a very good idea, um, frolicking in September. It's one of my favourite months to see my friends because August, everyone's so busy, we're all doing stuff, you know, everyone's away on holidays. And so September is when you sort of can start again, you can gather again. And there is another trend that lies within September. September is a month of fresh starts. In the UK, we have our fresh academic year. It's a lot of sharpening your pencils and get down to it attitude. It's a pretty jolly month, September. It's got a lot of uh, traditions associated with it. If you get married in September, your wedding is considered particularly blessed. I got married in September. I got married on the equinox that's in September. I mean, so many years ago now that I can't barely remember it. Actually, I can barely get to remember getting married anyway, because I was so terrorised by the whole thing that uh, it sort of blocked it from my mind in a trauma response. <laughs> I was never particularly good at having all eyes on me. And that's why I do this in front of one eye, which is this camera, because it's the only thing that looks at me. I'm on my own in this room. Nobody is looking at me. You're not looking at me. I can tell. Witches were known to frolic in this month, and so there was a lot of ceremonies by the pagans to keep the witches away. Bonfire ceremonies, harvest home ceremonies, cutting down the wheat and bringing in the corn. The celebration of the corn spirit happened in this month, hence it was called the Holy Month by the Anglo-Saxons. So if you are getting married in September, it is very, very important that you stand very, very close together with your partner when saying your vows, because otherwise a witch might come crawling between you or a bad thing come crawling between you and your marriage will not be good. So, I mean, I think this is pretty much good sense for anybody getting wed. When you say your vows, stand close. It's important after all. September is also the season of what is known as the Wild Hunt. This is a folklore which is extant throughout the whole of the United Kingdom. And it's about the supernatural hunt who starts their season now. The Wild Hunt collects the souls of all those who are hanging around to take them to hell. Um, so you don't want to go out at night in case your soul is accidentally collected. We have, there's lots of different forms of this. We've got Herne the Hunter in these parts, who was a woodland spirit who will lead you to your doom. Same sort of thing. But the upshot of it is don't go out at night without great protection. So that is my overview of the month of September. It's a month of winds caused by witches. It's a month of the wild hunt. It's a month where we're gathering in the harvest and being grateful for this plenty that has come to this world now. So with that said, let's have a look at the nitty gritty day to day detail. And of course, we're going to start with the 1st of September. Now, the 1st of September is the start of the meteorological autumn, which means that we're going into autumn. I mean, us witches have been in autumn for a good month so far, because autumn is all about setting seed and ripening energy, which happens in August, September and October. And summer is all about branching out and growing energy. 
The 1st of September is the time when you bring in your corn dolly, the one that you have made from the last remaining sheaf of wheat in your fields. Now this corn dolly holds the spirit of the corn and needs to be treasured throughout the months of darkness so that it can be taken back out to the fields in the spring and ploughed back into the land. As a result, the 1st of September has this issue with anybody who was due to be hanged on this day. I mean, obviously, this doesn't happen now because we don't hang people anymore in this country. However, if you were due to be officially hanged on this day, you were supposed to be given a very large bowl of ale so you could drink yourself into obliteration and oblivion in order to not know that you were about to be hanged. It's something to do with our ancestors not liking the fact that they're killing one of our own whilst bringing in their corn dollies and preserving the spirit of the land. It's a weird one that one but there is a little bit of a correlation there somewhere but we've forgotten what it is. The 3rd of September is the new moon and this new moon is in Virgo. Astrologers believe that each new moon takes on the aspects of the astrological sign that it's in. Virgo is all about the home. It's shoring up your home, your well-being and yourself. So if you make plans now, you know, a new exercise regime or maybe redecorating a room in your home, it's a really great day to start it on the 3rd. You will see the fruition of your tasks in the full moon in Virgo, which will happen in February 2025. However, the third is also a day which is fearful. There was a lot of things that have happened throughout British history that occurred on the 3rd of September. The Great Fire of London, where London burnt to the ground, it reached its peak on the 3rd. Oliver Cromwell had his greatest victory, where he slaughtered an awful lot of people on the 3rd. And he also died on the 3rd. One of the worst storms in the 17th century occurred on the 3rd. Our country is littered with, you know, fearful days. People have always said the 3rd of September is not the luckiest day of the year. I don't think it's the unluckiest, but it's just, you know, a bit fearsome. So be careful. The 9th of September is the Abbot's Bromley Horn Dance. Now, I don't care what anybody says. This is blatantly a pagan fertility festival hangover. It is reflective of what's happening with the deer in the country at the moment because they're rutting and therefore having a lovely time together. And the men dressed up in these reindeer antlers are also rutting. The antlers themselves are over a thousand years old and they're possibly native British reindeer. But it was around 1000 AD that reindeer became extinct in the UK. But before then, they were hanging around in a couple of herds. It is blatantly some form of pagan activity. Now we move swiftly on to the 14th of September. Now this is Devil's Nutting Day. September in itself is a month of gathering in the nuts and times past the kids go off a gathering nuts and children if they're sent out with other children will do as teenagers do and babies might develop from this situation but they are considered blessed and wonderful because the baby is gathered whilst you're gathering nuts. It's a fertility test almost, isn't it? The 14th is a particularly great time to gather your hazelnuts. Look out for the double hazelnuts. These double ones will cure rheumatism, toothache and the spells of witches. But it's very important that they must be ripe. Hazel is a witch's tree and so therefore if you pick unripe nuts from a witch's tree, it means that you will receive a lot of bad luck. Be warned, make sure the nuts you pick are only ever ripe. But the good news is that the nuts that you have picked are magical in their properties. So when you send off a bunch of people to go and gather nuts in the woods of a fine September afternoon, they'll probably have a predictable result from that. This is where nutting had a very saucy meaning to it for several years. So today is a very good day to go and nutting and gather your babies. The 18th of September is the night of the full moon. This full moon is in Pisces and it's known as the harvest moon because it is the full moon closest to the equinox. The full moon of September is not necessarily the always the harvest moon because it might be at the beginning of September. The equinox, as we know, happens around the 21st of September. And so the full moon in September is a harvest moon only every three years or so. Mostly it's in October. The harvest moon is the only moon that is dedicated to the equinox and this moon is particularly spectacular. 
the moon is at perigee, which means it's closest to the Earth in its orbit. Now, it's going to appear as a result 30% brighter, shinier and lovelier than it normally would when you look at the moon. As it's so close to the equinox, this moon, this super moon as it will be known, you can almost set your compass by it because it will pretty much rise in due east and it will set due west. It's in Pisces, which is a intuitive moon sign. So should you be having any particular moon rituals, this one is a great for having a group ritual in order to access that psychic capabilities that we all have and just grow them in strength and wonder. Added to this full moon, there is a partial lunar eclipse. Now, lunar eclipses are always said to herald bad news. So, who knows? We'll have to look out for anything slightly off happening in the future. The 22nd of September is the Feast of Mabon. This is the Feast of the Equinox, that great pagan feast. Now, I'm not going to do too much about the Equinox here because obviously my Mabon video will be coming out next week. So have a look at that when it comes. This Equinox happens on the 22nd of September when the sun is directly above the equator at 1.43 GMT time. In order to celebrate the equinox, so at 1.43 p.m. in the afternoon, what I would like you all to do is to light a candle because this will help us as we step into the darker half of this year. The 24th of September is when the sun enters the house of Libra and as always I'm going to read from my uh, calendar of shepherds of 1604 to tell you what the Libran male and the Libran female are like. So the man born under Libra shall be mightily praised and honoured in the service of captains. Obviously he's going to go to sea isn't he? He shall be go to unknown places and shall keep well his own. He will not make revelation in drink. So he's not a drunkard. So that's quite nice, isn't it? And he will not keep his promises. Oh dear. He will be married, but leave his wife. And he shall be enriched by woman, but experience evil fortune, though many shall ask counsel of him. He shall live till 70 years. He doesn't sound very nice to leave a man. This makes a change because I, they're often quite mean about the men and then even meaner about the women. So let's see what the calendar of shepherds says about the woman. Oh my goodness. The woman shall be amiable and of great courage and shall go in places unknown. She shall be debonair and merry, rejoiced by her husband. If she not be wedded at 13, she shall not be chaste. Oh my gosh, she's got to get married early. After 30 years old, she shall prosper the better and have great praise. She shall live till 60 years. Maybe the calendar of Shepherd's daughter was um, a Libra because that is the nicest one I've ever read. Mm. The 25th of September is the day of the Equilux, which means it's actually equal night and equal day on this particular day, not on the Equinox, which we all think, which is happening on the 22nd this year. So you can do your balancing spells from any time from just before the Equinox till just after the Equilux. So you've got a good week in order to carry out any balancing magic that you may need. The 28th of September is Crap Nut Day and this is the last day that you can collect the nuts from the bushes in the field because otherwise the devil will spit all over them. So you must leave them there for the spirits and the devil himself. So Crack Nut Day is when you have gathered all your nutting harvest in and then you light a bonfire to chase away those evil spirits. Now, of course, we can't necessarily light a bonfire where we are, so lighting a candle is just as good as lighting up the darkest areas of our homes to chase away those devilish energies. I have an old spell for this day, so if you live on a farm, do this spell. This is an old folk spell to appease the devil and honour the grain. It is made from equal parts of all the grains that are grown on your farm. If you grow barley and wheat and oats, for example, you would mix equal part of all these grains into a dough. Knead these together with butter, eggs and sheep's milk. Mark it with a cross and then cook this dough into bread in a fire made from rowan, oak and bramble. 
because family is very much of the time, isn't it? When it's cooked, each member of the household must eat a small portion of it to ensure that their health, wealth and happiness throughout the coming year. I think that's a charming spell, really. It chases away the devil and praises the grain at the same time. The 29th of September is the day for guardian angels. Not just our own personal guardian agents, but titular guardian angels. The guardian angels of towns, cities, valleys, rivers, trees, you name it, the guardian angel of it. So on this day, it's a really great time to, you know, say thank you to your guardian angels. They don't require worship, but they do like to be honoured. And however you feel like honouring your own guardian angel, today is a great day to do it. The Christians took this over and turned it into Michaelmas Day, which is after St. Michael, who's their sort of sun god, really. He's an archangel. He's very, very high up in the Christian hierarchy of angels. And I think they took this over in order to stop this worship of the pagan titular deities. The English way of celebrating this particular feast day is to have a roast goose. And, and if you ate goose on the 29th of September, you would never want for money for the rest of the year. Well, I'd love to know if you're going to have some roast goose today. It is a delicious meat after all. Let me know in the comments below. Now do go to ginnymetherall.co.uk forward slash retreat to book into my retreat. There's a couple of places left. We are looking at filling up quite soon. It is getting quite full. So if you're interested in joining, do have a go there. If you'd like to learn more about witchcraft, go to my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherall. You can come and join my coven meeting where you will be guaranteed to learn loads of witchcraft every single month. Otherwise, please don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next week.